In this video, we're going to show you how to use Keyword Researcher to do a typical day of SEO work. Now, if you've been an SEO for any length of time, then you know that it's pretty common to start out at the Google Keyword Planner. So we'll start out there too. Our example website was a low carb dieting website. So let's just start out by getting some keyword data for our primary keyword phrase, low carb diet. Then we'll scroll down and press get ideas. So we have our list of data from the Google Keyword Planner and typically at this point, people will simply scroll over and click the download button and save the data to the hard drive. So if you look in your file folder, you can see we've just saved our CSV file to our hard drive on the PC. And if you want to actually view the contents of the CSV file, you can look in a typical notepad document and of course, we can see the textual content of the file. Now, obviously, it's basically impossible to work with in this format, but let's see if we can do better. Let's open Keyword Researcher and start a new project. Recall that our example website is a low-carb diet website. So let's use Keyword Researcher's wildcard search function to harvest some low-carb keywords. I'll minimize the article tree by clicking the minus sign. And to get some more room, I'll drag it to the left. Now let's enter our primary keyword phrase into the search box, followed by the asterisk, and press play. To save time in our video, we'll speed this up a bit, but you can watch as Keyword Researcher replaces the asterisk with the letters A through Z. And when it's all done, we have 251 unique keywords. Let's copy these keywords to our clipboard. We can just double click on the heading right click and click copy. Now let's head back to the Google Keyword Planner and we'll paste the keywords into our input box. We'll scroll down and press the get search volume button. Now again this search results in more keywords from Google and let's slide over and download to our hard drive for a second time. If we switch back to our file folder, you'll notice that we now have two CSV files. In the D drive, we had our original CSV file that was downloaded at the beginning of this video, and we have the new one that was just downloaded. Both of these CSV files contain keyword phrases for our carb-free diet niche example website. So now we have to combine our CSV files into some format of actionable data. So let's switch back to Keyword Researcher and let's click on the import a CSV file tab. From here, we can simply drag and drop our CSV files into the drop zone. And now let's move all of our keywords to our main project grid by clicking this move all button. We'll slide the article tree over so we can see our main project grid. Let's go ahead and sort by the average monthly searches and let's make our keyword column slightly larger. So I hope you can see the value in what we've just done. We've just managed to import two CSV files from the Google Keyword Planner, and the app has stitched the files together for us and is presenting our keywords to us in a nice columnar format. We also searched for many of these long tail keywords using Keyword Researcher's built-in wildcard search function. So there's a lot of value in just getting to this stage of the SEO chore. But now we come to what is perhaps the hardest task in the SEO chore, and that is cleaning our keyword list, particularly deciding which keywords we want to use on our website. Let's take a moment to discuss our three color swatches here. We have the white list, the gray list, and the black list. The white list is for keywords that you do want on your website. The gray list is for keywords that you haven't sorted yet, or you're not sure if you want to put it on your website or not. And the blacklist is for keywords that you're sure you will not need for your website. By default, you can see that all keywords are placed on the gray list. So now we have to decide which keywords we do want on our website and which keywords we do not want on our website. So this is where the art and science of SEO come together. This is where art meets science. There is no perfect formula for determining which keywords you should blacklist and which ones you shouldn't. It's a highly subjective process and it's dependent upon the business model that you're using. It's also dependent upon your ability to actually create content for these keywords because ultimately 
these keywords need to be assigned to content articles on your website and you have to create content that is about these keywords. And a lot of these keywords are too broad. So recall, our example website is a carb-free diet website. So many of these keywords would not be worth tracking. You can see here we have the word diet. So that's obviously a very, very broad search phrase. So we just immediately put the word diet on the blacklist. We also see competing diet programs like the Ducan diet, or there's also the HCG diet. And then there is very, very general terms like lose weight fast. Remember, this particular example website is just about the low carb diet and is not about general dieting. So we can see two on the top here, how to lose weight fast and weight loss. So you can see this is the meticulous process you have to go through if you're an SEO guy. This would be a very, very tedious task without some sort of software like this, like Keyword Researcher, because we've built in a lot of tricks to make this process easier. For example, we see here the word diet pills. Now, if our particular website does not sell any pills, then any keyword that has the word pills in it is not gonna be needed. So that's an example of a word that we can put on the negative keyword list. Let's do that now. We'll slide over our panel and click the negative keyword list panel. Now, I'll simply type the word pills and click the apply button. Keyword Researcher has just searched through our list of keywords and whenever it encountered the word pills, it put the actual keyword onto the blacklist. You can see diet pills and weight loss pills is now on the blacklist. So we've gone over some ways to find keywords that we do not want on our website. So now how do we find keywords that we do want on our website? Recall that our example website was about carb-free dieting. So an obvious first course of action would just be to look for all the keywords that contain the word carb. So we can move our mouse down to the filter box and simply type carb and press enter. And of course, Keyword Researcher will filter out all of our keywords and only show us the ones that contain the words carb, that contain C-A-R-B. So just in glancing at this list, you can see we've already come a long way in filtering out our list to only show the words that we probably do want on our website. You can see here, low carb bread, low carb desserts, low carb vegetables. These are obviously phrases that would be associated with the low carb website. Now we can also do logical operators. Like here we can type and diet. So this will notify Keyword Researcher to only show the keyword phrases that contain the word carb and contain the word diet. Or again, we can type greater than five. And this will tell Keyword Researcher to only show the keyword phrases that contain the word carb and contain the word diet and have more than five words in the keyword phrase. You can see the top one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words in the keyword phrase. So some of the keywords in this search would probably be designated as long tail keyword phrases. So if you were looking for that supposed low hanging fruit, then just putting a number like we've done here will only show you the longer keywords in your project. If, for example, we were looking for question keywords, we might type in what and carb. And you can see we have a lot of question keywords starting with the word what and containing the word carb, like what is a low carb diet being our first keyword here on top. Or we might try changing this what to a how. And of course, now we have the how word shown. How many carbs in a low carb diet? Now, of course, as you go down the column, the number of searches per month can get quite small. So we might want to direct Keyword Researcher to only show keywords that maybe have more than or greater than 100 searches per month. And you can see we do that by just putting the greater than sign here and typing an integer value. Now, when we actually find the keywords that we want to use, we can just click this whitelist button here. And so you can just think of this button as a note to indicate to yourself that you do want to use this keyword on your website because you've just assigned it to the whitelist. We can assign some from our previous search too. Carb and diet. 
So if I just go down the list here and click the white swatch, then of course these are on the white swatch as well. When I right click on the keyword header, I can click this blue button to remove all the filters. And now we're just looking at the actual keyword grid without any filters or searches applied. So you notice that we're just looking at the keywords as we imported them from our CSV files. So you notice in this keyword list, we of course have many keywords on the black list, some on the gray list, and we have one here on the white list. And as we scroll down, we can see more. But what if we only wanted to see the keywords that were on the white list, we can just click the white list button here. And now we're only looking at the keywords that I've sent or I've assigned to the white list. In the same way, these are all the keywords that are on the gray list still, and these are all the keywords that are on the black list. Now, you'll probably generally want to just look at the white and the gray list, and we can do that by clicking this chain icon here. You can see now we're looking at only keywords that are on the white list and the gray list. The blacklisted keywords have been removed from our filtered view because it's not very useful to look at the blacklisted keywords once you've sent them to the blacklist. Typically, after you've assigned a keyword to the blacklist, then you almost never need to see it again, which is why it's typical to spend most of your time in this filtered view, just seeing the white and the gray list. So now that you have an idea of how to actually find the keywords that you want, how do we go about assigning them to content articles? Let's go ahead and bring up our article tree and let's adjust our grid a little bit. We'll right click on the heading and select the settings icon. Then I'm going to hide the suggested bid and keyword tags. So now I only have two columns that I really wanna concentrate on right now, the average monthly searches and the article. I'm gonna drag this to the left a little bit so you can see both. So as an SEO guy, these are the three columns that are pretty essential in your job. Column number one, you have the keyword column, then you have the number of searches per month, and then you have the article that that keyword is assigned to. Ultimately, when you put keywords on your website, they have to be assigned into logical groups. And so a major part of the SEO task is just finding the keywords that you want and then assigning them into this third column here, assigning them to an article on your website. As an example article, we might type carb and fat, and that would show us various keywords that contain the word carb and contain the word fat, like the first one here, low carb, high fat diet. We can see that 8,100 people a month are searching for this keyword phrase. So if we had a diet website about the low carb diet, then obviously this might be a keyword that we'd consider using in a content article. This is actually an interesting example because you can see directly under that, we have high fat, low carb diet. Now, if you look closely, you'll notice that these two people are actually searching for the same thing, but they just typed it in a different order. But you'll notice that the top keyword has 3000 more searches per month than the second keyword. Further interesting is that the third keyword is actually also quite similar, high carb, low fat. And the fourth keyword is about a recipe. So that might not be something we want on the same article. We might wanna put that in its own recipe article. And the fourth keyword, low fat, low carb diet, is also similar to our first three. So perhaps for our first article, we'd use the first three keywords and the fourth keyword, and we'd make a large content article about these subjects, a low carb, high fat diet, and how it contrasts with a high carb, low fat diet. So we might wanna use those four keywords in the same article. So for this example, let's go ahead and use a generic title for our article and give it a name. We'll call it low carb, high fat diet guide. We'll move the article tree over a little bit so you can see the text there. Now, in a more real world example, you'd probably want to use a title that had a little bit more panache than that. But this is just an example, and this is a very typical sort of content article that you find on the internet. Basically, a sort of informational content guide for somebody who is, just wants to learn about these topics. 
Now we've already put our four keywords on the whitelist, so now how do we assign them to the actual article? Well, we do that just by dragging it. We can just see, we do a drag and drop, and then a drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. So you'll notice that as I did the drag and drop into the article tree, then in our main keyword grid, the keyword itself became assigned to the article. Again, this is the major part of the SEO's job. When you're doing on-page SEO, a big part of your job is merely assigning keywords into logical article groups. Now, what about actually writing the content? Let's go ahead and slide our article tree to the left side of the app. And let's click on the Write Content tab. We'll click the plus icon to show the keywords that we've assigned to this article. And I'll paste in some random content that I got from the internet. So we're working with a very small text window here. The monitor that you use is, of course, much bigger, so you'll have more room to write and modify this text. But for this example, I just wanted to go over these three icons here, the T, S, and C. This stands for the title, the slug, and the content. You can also see them faintly written here, T, S, and C, title, slug, and content. In on-page SEO, these are the three most important areas on your document where you want to get your keywords into. You can see that our top keyword, low-carb, high-fat diet, is colored green on the T. That's because it's in the title completely here, low-carb, high-fat diet, and then the word guide. If we hit the highlighter icon, then we can see our keyword turn green, indicating that all of the words from the keyword phrase are in the title, low-carb, high-fat diet. Same thing with the slug, low-carb, high-fat diet. Now, this keyword is not completely in the content area entirely, but it does have four words of the keyword phrase included, low-carb, high-fat. It just doesn't have the word diet. So that's why the highlighter is colored orange and the icon is colored orange. This is useful because it tells you how much of the keyword phrase you are using in your document properties. You'll notice that if I were to change this title, then notice how the T icon is no longer green. It's turned to white because no words from our keyword phrase are in the title anymore. So the chore of SEO optimizing a document is made a lot easier for you with Keyword Researcher because the highlighter icon will always show you where your keywords are in the actual document. So there's never any mystery about whether you are or are not using your keyword phrases in your document content. So in this example, we just created one content page, but you would repeat these steps for every content article that you want to make in your website. Again, you have your keywords on the left and your articles on the right, and you use Keyword Researcher's article tree to create a hierarchy of categories, articles, and keywords. And this is a major organizational advantage because to do this without a tool like this, it would be very tricky to actually make sense of a large list of keywords. Even a small list of keywords, it's pretty tricky to do this using just Microsoft Excel. And when you finally have your content done and it's ready to be exported, then you can click the export button on top and we have a command called export article content to a WordPress XML file. So if you use WordPress, you can simply select the article that you'd like to export and then click the blue button. And then that's it. The XML file has been saved to your hard drive and all WordPress installations can read this file because this is a native WordPress XML file ready to be uploaded to your website. So this was a very brief demo showing all of Keyword Researcher's foundational functionality. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions let us know.